The most large stars, more than eight times the mass of our sun, die in brilliant explosions called supernova. So the moment this star collapses, the moment a neutron star or black hole is created. But this shockwave, this near-death experience, will go out into the star system, hitting the other planets. And by hitting the other planets, may actually affect the atmosphere and conditions of those planets, and therefore affect the possibility of hosting life. So by knowing the ranges of stars and planetary systems, and what they end and how they end, will tell us, is there life elsewhere out there in the universe? The red supergiant star Betelgeuse is nearing the end of its life, and researchers are preparing for what it will look like when the star dies in a fiery explosion called a supernova. Located in the constellation Orion, the star is about a thousand times the size of the sun. Betelgeuse's brightness has been dipping to the lowest point in the past 100 years, and some scientists have suggested that the star is getting close to running out of fuel and going supernova. Is Betelgeuse really about to explode? Why is it dimming? And can Betelgeuse kill us? Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. When a massive star runs out of material in its core, the star will collapse under its own gravity and turn into a supernova. Betelgeuse, a reddish star that's one of the brightest in the night sky, has been noticeably fainting or getting dimmer. The approximately 8.5 million year old star, which is part of the Orion constellation, has been one of the most recognizable stars in the sky because of its brightness and coloration. But this recent dramatic fading has prompted scientists to suggest that the star may be entering a pre-supernova phase, dimming before it collapses and dies in a fiery supernova explosion. If the star does become a supernova, Betelgeuse will likely be as bright as or even brighter than the moon for weeks or even more. So could the dimming be a sign of an imminent supernova? Levesque admits that we still know very little about what a star will do in the final days or weeks before it explodes. But she says that's the best guess for when Betelgeuse will die. A supernova tomorrow is not flat out impossible, she says. But it's unlikely. So what's responsible for the recent dimming? Betelgeuse's usual 420-day pulsation cycle, which is caused by variations in the star's size, cannot alone count for the dimming, says Levesque. So there's probably at least one other mechanism going on. One possibility is that the star is being obscured, making it appear dimmer. We know that stars like Betelgeuse periodically shed mass from their surface, which condenses into dust around the star, she says. This would effectively block our view. We also know that red supergiants have big convective zones on their surfaces, she adds. Hot gas from deep inside the star rises to the surface, where it cools and sinks again. Changes in this circulation could be altering the star's surface temperature, and hence its brightness, another possible explanation for what's going on. So when will the Betelgeuse go supernova? It could be tonight, I don't deny it, says Felimpanko. It's just that the current dimming is not something that's incredibly unusual. Estimates put Betelgeuse going supernova at probably within the next 100,000 years, but that's just a best guess. According to the most recent models, it could take as long as half a million years, says Filimpenko. It all depends on what exactly the mass of the star is and how far it's already gone through its evolutionary burning. And we just don't know those things for sure. If Betelgeuse does go supernova, will it be seen from Earth? And would it affect us? According to co-author Laszlo Molnar from the Konkali Observatory in Budapest, the actual size of Betelgeuse has been a bit of a mystery. Earlier studies suggested it could be bigger than the orbit of Jupiter. Our results say Betelgeuse only extends out to two-thirds of that, with a radius 750 times the radius of the Sun. Once we had the physical size of the star, we were able to determine the distance from Earth. Our results show it's a mere 530 light-years from us, 25% closer than we previously thought. That's significantly closer than the previously estimated distance of 724 light-years, but still plenty far away, safety-wise. Whenever Betelgeuse does eventually explode, it is distant enough that the explosion won't have much, if any, effect on Earth. That's a comforting thought, although if scientists were right, none of us alive right now will be around to see it. But for any scientists at the time, it will be a unique chance to witness a supernova that is relatively close by. Joyce said, it's still a really big deal when a supernova goes off. And this is our closest candidate. It gives us a rare opportunity to study what happens to stars like this before they explode.
there could be a threat from a supernova's high-energy radiation X-rays and gamma rays interacting with Earth's atmosphere. One of the primary concerns is that the ozone layer gets destroyed, which would allow more ultraviolet radiation from the sun to come through, says Philip Panko. That could wreak havoc, killing plankton in the ocean and affecting the entire food chain. Betelgeuse may be the closest known star that could soon go supernova, even if it's guessed at 100,000 years. However, some astronomers now think that there's a much closer star that could nova, a star called V Sagittae, 7,800 light years distant in the tiny constellation of Sagitta, just below Cygnus in the famous summer triangle Asterium of Stars. It's barely visible even in mid-sized telescopes, but new research suggests that it could explode around the year 2083. Although it won't be as spectacular of a sight as Betelgeuse going supernova, when V Sagittae explodes, it can become as bright as Sirius, currently the brightest star visible in the night sky. It will also temporarily become the most luminous star in the Milky Way galaxy. Around the year 2083, its accretion rate will rise catastrophically, spilling mass at incredibly high rates onto the white dwarf. With this material blazing away, says Professor Emirates Bradley E. Schaefer, LSU Department of Physics and Astronomy. In the final days of this death spiral, all of the mass from the companion star will fall onto the white dwarf, creating supermassive wind from the merging star, appearing as bright as Sirius, possibly even as bright as Venus.